Welcome back to New Amsterdam Radio, the podcast for thinkers, doers, and creatives. It is I am the mayor, Flo Boys, in the mayor's office. But as always, I am not alone. You see, I like to curl up with a nice, good book between meetings and appointments and during my day. But I have been enamored about the information contained and experiences of adolescents living with type 1 diabetes with negotiating within society. And I have the author right here. Please welcome Gloria Shabala. How are you doing this morning? I'm fine, thank you. And you, Paul? Yeah, I guess it's not morning where you are. You're like nine hours. Oh, ahead. yeah, that's why I nearly. It's in the evening. Sorry, I didn't get it right. No, it's my fault. I said good morning. And I just I just realized it's, it's super it's early. It's fine. I understand you're in California. Right. What, what inspired you to write this book? Uh, I know you have extensive research in diabetes, but what made you decide to write this book here today? I, I just decided to write it down because I thought I've done this work. Maybe it can inspire other people as to how to follow a research, a psychosocial research, because most of the time people would say, I can't do any research. I don't have money. So this one doesn't need any money because it's just talking to people. And then I thought maybe, maybe not. I, I was thinking of the, as they, the, someone once said, publish or perish then i decided to write it yeah that that's true i mean if all the ideas in your head mean nothing if they stay in your head uh what what was how long it took you to put things together was it a, a long time or it didn't take me a long time maybe it took me three months but i left it i, I just I, I, and then one t after some time when I was tidying up, I had this girl from Portugal. She said, oh, what's this? Oh, and she read it. She said, oh, did you publish it? I said, yeah, it's about to be published, but I've been busy here and there. And then she really said, oh, it would be nice if you publish it. I said, yeah, as you can see that I, I said to be published. So I, I decided to go for it. Oh, absolutely. So let's let's talk about the book. Uh, what is the main thing people want to pull from it? Like what has been the best part of writing it, your writing process? Walk me through all of that. You, you, the, the, the best part of it was to, to maybe before writing was talking to these teenagers or the adolescents and then just putting the, the thing on paper. So that was quite interesting. Yeah. Because I was writing what the real people I know or the real adolescents I know, what they said and yeah, on interviews. Yeah. And so you had interviews, write down what they said. What was anything that, that surprised you or any you learned about your subjects while writing the book? Uh, uh, well, what I learned that maybe as a health professional, when people come to see me, I, I'm so worried about the condition as if I, I, I want to take over and, t and tell the people, you, this is what is to be done, this is this and that and that. Whereas the, 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 the person who's just living with the condition is just thinking, wow, mm -hmm. he doesn't know what she's talking about. I, I, I thought with the knowledge, sometimes you tend to speak as if you are a, you are not listening to the person who's in, who, who's living with the condition, you that you because you want to help, but still the psychosocial aspect should be taken and the views that I wonder what to be in the shoes of this person. How does it feel like? Yeah, uh, you know, I, I've been fortunate enough to not have diabetes in my adolescence, but it's a very st uh, strange time for anyone. Not to mention it having, is, yeah, it's, it's difficult times. Well, it's it's tough time, but people overcome this tough time. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, not not to like give away everything, but is there something that you've learned talking with your subjects that you like to share on the show today, or do I have to like <laughs> tell them about the book? You mean, well, the the the, the book is, is is when I when I did it, it was just to see their experiences how how do you do they experience 
uh, the diabetes because some people think that to have diabetes this sort of they, they were also we also stick of a stigma some people don't even want to talk about it as if it's a shame to have it whereas there's nothing and then so the, the, they are struggling to live with diabetes to know about the condition how to manage the condition what to do and not to do still they must appear as if they are fitting well with the other members of the society never mind diabetes diabetes is just one of those things there is the society and another thing they are developing besides that there is diabetes they are still looking for their self-identity who am i like any other um, you, you have been an adolescent you will remember that well, when you were young, you, 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 you think you are old enough to understand things, whereas you are young enough not to miss some of the things. It's a difficult time, a transitional period where you, yeah, you really need support, but still you also need your views, not people to take over your your thinking process they can support you and guide you you also need to be the one who is there well i mean especially when you are an older adolescent maybe that a 12 year old 13 year old so still is sort of trying to figure things out but those who are now going to, sort of going to be adults they really have their own views. That's what I thought. They have their own wishes and wants. Never mind what the medical or the health professional think they want. No, they 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 have their own agenda. Never mind. They want to be well treated and well managed and be though they have diabetes as if they don't have diabetes. That's hmm. how they wish. Right, right. That's how I, I, mm, I take it. You mm. had mentioned uh, support for those that, that suffer uh, from diabetes, and support systems are very, very important. As a writer, I would ask you, do you have a support system? Is there anyone out there that has helped support you on your writer's journey? Yeah, I, I did have uh, support, maybe a few colleagues. Uh, one colleague I worked with in South Africa, and fortunately is now in England, well, he is an English person. He was once in South Africa, and then some people at work, and 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 and, and other uh, sort of people who are living with diabetes. I, I have known over the years. So they are also my support system, and my family, of course, children and everybody. I think they they are my support system. So, when it comes to your book, what? How does the world around you influence your writing style? The world around me. Oh, oh well, it's because the world around me. I I, I think they are always keen for to, to to know what's happening, and they also want to know whatever condition they live with, if people really look at it or they are just treated as one of those people who are just having the condition. So it, it does influence. Because people are different, they are individuals. There are those who can listen and take all the information. And but some people they need to read, or uh, as we are talking on the radio, some people listen, but some people need to watch. That's why they watch TV. Some people are readers. Yeah. They are not just yeah, they are not just listeners. They are listeners, but not hundred percent. When it comes to diabetes, and maybe correct me if I'm wrong, sometimes people just work themselves into denial. They go, oh, I'm fine. And they keep their diet the same. They go do things the same. Like, what's been the challenge with teenagers sometimes saying how how serious this can be if, if left untreated? Yeah, I, I, I think people, whether they're teenagers or whatever age, they need to know that it can be serious if it's not well controlled. But if you are well controlled, yeah, you can use the word fine. But if things are not going okay, it can affect other organs or the, the whole system, in fact, or you as an individual. The, in fact, the physical and the psychosocial system as a whole. Mm. Absolutely. Uh, when not the book was... 
the book was released, what has been some of the feedback? Any criticisms, any props, any praise? Walk me through the release of the book. Well, there's, they didn't do much. Maybe it was released and then the COVID started. <laughs> because people like have heard them say, oh, COVID is blocking everything. It's standing on our way, COVID-19 rather. Mm -hmm. So, yes, but there were some praises. And, and, and other people said they felt I must write a book, sort of like a narrative, not, not like uh, a research book one that would help maybe the parents or the school teachers and the community at large yeah so like a companion book to this one yeah okay well you know what that's one of the cool things about when you have a project being released you can go oh i can go back and expand or try new things and that's yeah, kind of yeah. the creative it, process yeah it's a process indeed <laughs> when did you first realize you wanted to be a writer i'm just curious uh, may, maybe long time ago. The reason I realized is because most of the time uh, I was just doing the editing and the, should I use the word translating, some mm -hmm. of the English work into other languages. I'm mm -hmm. from South Africa where we speak 11 languages. Oh English my goodness. Is, yeah, English is number 11. So I don't speak English at all at home. So they'll give me this work in English, then I'll translate to other languages on diabetes. Then I said, well, if I can write this thing in another language, maybe I need to be original rather than to to keep on reviewing, reviewing uh, work of other people. Wait, wait, 11 languages? <laughs> what? <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm not counting other dialects which are uh, around the corner. They, they are eleven. What, so, so ask, is, is, it they, <laughs> is it true what they say then that the national anthem of South Africa has multiple languages in it? Yes, five. Uh, my mind is blowing. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> That's so cool. And, 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 and if you are if you grow up speaking many languages, it, 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 it it's not a problem. That's why I always say when I'm here in England, people are worried about the accent. Oh, the accent is not good, but they can hardly speak any other language. With us, we worry about communication. Does the person understand what I'm trying to say in Afrikaans or in whatever language? It could be Portuguese. Yeah. In California, I'm supposed to be speaking another language, I know, not only English. Yeah, I think, well, I live in Los Angeles, and the, the foremost uh, common languages are English, Spanish, Mandarin, and Tagalog, uh, Chinese, you see? and Philippines. Uh, Tagalog, yeah. Tagalog, I, I speak one word. <laughs> <Not anymore. laughs> but I, I, I've tried to be that. I'm just, I'm just a monolinguist. I'm sorry. <laughs> like most Americans, yeah. I speak one language. <laughs> but I want to speak more. I think we are better here. I think I've seen people who are speaking only English. You know? oh, well, they say, I, I, uh, maybe they speak other languages behind closed doors. I don't know. Yeah. You know what? This is, makes a lot more sense. When I was in um, a, a university, I guess they call it English. When I was in university, uh, we had a foreign exchange student. Uh, he was from Namibia. And he used to be so upset with himself because he only, only spoke six languages. And I never understood it. But now you're saying you speak 11. Mm -hmm. I go, oh, my goodness. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I tell people who, who, who are writing a CV, I said, if you apply for a job in South Africa, don't say I speak two languages. Just leave it because they'll think you can't speak if you speak two languages. Just leave the language part. You, you'll tell them another day. If, yeah. if people are speak, like the president we have speaks all the loving languages fluently. So if you say you speak two, they say, wow, this one, how is he going to cope now? Yeah, <laughs> more now, but wow. So, so I got to ask you, someone I think is successful to do so many languages, do so many, so many uh, books, to go out there and educate so many other people. Let me mm. ask you, how do you define success for yourself and others? Hey, it is a difficult question, but success maybe is achieving your goals or maybe nearly achieving your goals, or st but still trying, uh, striving to, to, because I think 
achieving goals is, is a never ending process. It, 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 you, it's, it, it is continual. You keep on saying this and this. As I say, I've written that little book, but I, I, I wouldn't say I'm successful. I'm, I'm still striving for something more. Absolutely. So, so, yeah. Yeah, it is a process, success. I, I'm a firm believer that I think true creatives and true intellectuals are always trying to find that next pursuit and passion, that quest for knowledge. So mm. I, I respect that. Big up. Mm. Uh, I got to ask a little bit of an old school question, but if you had uh, any bit of advice for a younger version of yourself, what would you say is set aside for her? I, I would say be focused in whatever you are doing be determined and patience. Yeah, if you are not patient, really, it, it becomes a problem. Yeah, yeah, and patience, determination, and focus, it, it, it can bring success. Yeah. Not just to do things haphazardly or think you'll succeed after two, day, two years or three years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, as far as like, we're talking about before about other works and other kind of things. Are you focused in the the aspect of diabetes for adolescents or are you thinking about tackling on other diseases for adolescents? What's next for you? I was, maybe I've, uh, I've done diabetes a, 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 a lot. I can look at other things like asthma, but I, I I still think there's a lot to be done with adoles adolescents or diabetes at large. Maybe I can now focus on type 2 diabetes because I've seen some adolescents with type 2 diabetes. In the olden days, we used to think type 2 is for younger people, but it's for old, uh, type 2 is for older people rather. But now I see children uh, by children or maybe i mean adolescents and younger uh, and young adults with type 2 diabetes maybe mm -hmm. that also needs some visitation Ab absolutely uh good to know i like the fact that you have a plan going forward but a little bit of a personal <laughs> question what do you do on a day off when you're not writing you're not researching you're not having interviews what do you do for fun oh i i have so m i have so much things <laughs> Well, sometimes I, 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 I like to watch sports. And another thing, I sing with the choir. So I go for choir practices. I like choral music. Yeah. Oh, I, I do many things and, and, and watch sport. And, and, and sometimes if uh, my, my, well, my grandchildren are far, but if they are around, then I take my grandchildren. We visit some places of interest. I like, uh, and and then teach them a little bit because I've seen, not that I'm criticized, people today, they Google everything. You yes. say, uh, oh, yeah, oh, oh, where, 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 where is, Cali where is uh, Los Angeles? People not know that it's in California. They Google <laughs> and then, oh, yeah, it's in California. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, what sport do you watch? Football, cricket, or basketball? Yeah. My son used to play cricket uh, when he was a youngster. Mm -hmm. um, so I watch cricket, I follow cricket and rugby. I, I have this thing, I think I, I've become addicted to rugby over the years, not like, yeah. And football, of course. Well, if you are a South African, you, football is, everybody seems to watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But That's... I like rugby and cricket. <laughs> Oh, I also watch anything, even tennis and other things, but those are my, the thing I try to, uh, <laughs> to watch American football, I, I don't understand, but I just watch it. <laughs> <laughs> That's I, said, I said, well, I don't understand the rules, but let me just see what they are doing. Mm. Oh, like I'm sport. the same way. My 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 parents mm. are from the West Indies, and I don't understand cricket, but I'll watch it because it's a cultural thing, I right? You must know cricket if you're West Indies. <laughs> I know of it. Listen, 
Yeah, you share, I would. I won't say shame to you. Uh, you must try and learn cricket. I'll teach you one day. <laughs> it's, a, it's a promise. Uh, yeah, experiences with adolescents living with type one diabetes. Wants the Ghost Gene Society available now. Gloria, if anyone wants to buy that book, how do they go about doing that today? They can get it. Is there on Amazon or on website? Mm, they can order it. And if anyone want to connect with you or ask you questions or, or how they go about doing that? Oh, it's, it, it's GloriaShabalala.com. Oh, I have so many emails. Is that the one I use for the book, I think? Yeah. <laughs> So much, so many emails. I I could totally relate with that. Thank you so much for being on the show, New Am Sam Radio. I want to have you back, and especially when you have that second book release. I'm I'm calling it now. When the next book comes out, you got to be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your time. <laughs>